Good morning, guys. Good morning. I am so pumped. And after last night's Zoom call training about fundraisers with our sister, Anna Hughes, it was like explosive. Our weekly Zoom call training is like everything. Tuesday nights, guys, you definitely need to be on the training calls every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So let me tell you guys what has happened so far. A lot of you guys really jumped out there and started promoting uh, to get people to talk about letting you help them, allowing you to help them to raise money. So there were several things that we learned on the call last night about uh, car bar fundraisers and people who are looking to do fundraisers for not just groups, but for also for individuals. We, we learned this stuff last night. And it was one thing that Anna told us that really, really, really helped us out. It really helped us get that start to see where we could get these fundraisers. So I'm gonna tell you guys, I jumped out there because I've been doing this now for 11 years and the things that I learned from her were not things that I was doing. I was, I wanna simplify this. I've done fundraisers in the past. I've done uh, school fundraisers. I've done cheerleader fundraisings. I've done uh, individual fundraisers. I've done uh, fundraising events. So I'm familiar with fundraisers, but I love how she put it out there because it, it just makes it so much easier. <laughs> I'm all about simplicity. So the one thing that really stood out that she said, and I challenge you guys to do this if you haven't, a lot of you have already done it. She said, take this information to social media and make this post. So this is what I said on my Facebook page. I said, if you had $500 to donate to any organization, what organization would you choose and why? Not only are you asking them to tell you about an organization, you want them to tell you why, okay? Because you'll find that when you post something like this, guys, you're gonna get a lot of interaction. I post this not I think I posted this maybe 12 hours ago, late last night around maybe nine o'clock. And now it's almost nine o'clock again, almost 12 hours ago. Currently, I have over 103 comments on that one post. People are still commenting and I need to go back and respond. So as they're commenting, I'm thanking them for the information. Secondly, what I'm doing is asking them if they have a contact person. Let me tell you what that's doing. Two things. It's allowing you to get a contact person name if they have one. That's one thing. The second thing that it's doing is keeping that post in the news feed so that people can keep making comments on that post. And what's gonna happen, guys, I am going to go back later and thank all of them privately. The next thing I'm going to do is before all this disappears, I am going to write down all the recommendations that they have given. I'm going to write all this down because you don't want it to get lost. Write it down. And I know some of you have already done this and some of you are asking, well, once I get this, what do I do next? What is next? <laughs> That's the golden thing right there. Because we talked about the different things that we can do, but the instructions on what to do once I get this. What do you do next? What's next? Okay, guys, let me tell you what I have done in the past when I have secured fundraisers. And this is the key thing, guys. A lot of people don't know what Sensi is. A lot of people don't even know. People who know about Sensi may not even know that we are in a position to help them raise money. So this is what I have done. And here guys, there's no wrong or right way of doing this. This is just my experience, okay? I wanna tell you about my experience. Um, one thing I've learned about, uh, one thing I've learned about uh, fundraisers is that people, sometimes they want some kind of proof source. They wanna know how successful you have been with this fundraiser, since they don't know a lot about Cincy. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there is like a standard letter in the workstation about, it's like an introduction letter. I think there is one out there in the workstation. I think it is. If not, we'll work on that. So uh, 
I can remember the first fundraiser. I'm going to tell you guys about the first fundraiser that I was able to do. Mine was a school fundraiser, the first one I've done, and it was huge. It was like so big. It was a middle school fundraiser that I took part in. And as a matter of fact, the consultant who um, introduced this fundraiser to me, well, she's a consultant now. She was not one then. I met her in the airport. I gave her a sample of blueberry cheesecake. She told me that the school was looking for a fundraiser because they had done them previously. She thought, well, maybe we'd, we can do a different one. Guys, I was new. I didn't have a clue about what to do. I knew we did fundraising, but I didn't know anything about what to do. So don't be afraid of being new. Don't be afraid of not doing one before. You can secure the fundraiser, guys, and we'll figure out the details later. You just get the fundraiser. We'll help you with that. So I got the fundraiser secured by doing a presentation. I went to the school to do a presentation. What in the world is a presentation? A presentation, all it is, guys, is what I did. I took the warmer to the school. I warmed the wax so that they could see what Cincy products had, see what, what we do with the products and how they work. Get that out. <laughs> so I wanted to let people see how the actual product worked. That was my presentation. Simple as that. Same thing you would do at a party. You do like introduction. You introduce the product. Basically is what a presentation would be. Uh, to introduce the product. Talk a little bit about what Scentsy has and what the product is all about. And that's all I did. I didn't have a clue about what I was doing for real. But people were impressed with it. They knew it was affordable. And they said, yeah, we'll do that fundraiser. So I'm like, oh my goodness. We hadn't even discussed how much money I was going to give back to them. So after they decided that they would do the fundraiser, we then started discussing money. So what I told them is that I will give you all of my commissions. That's what I did. I said, I will give you all of my commissions on every sale. And guess what else, guys? Whenever your PRV exceeds 2000 we get a 5% bonus. So that, therefore, you're able to give more money if it hits that point. And here's something else, guys. In your workstation, when you set this up, you set it up just like a party. So let's say that the fundraiser is called uh, Danny's Fundraising Project, Project or something like that. I'm just throwing a name out there. Say you call it Danny's Fundraising Project or whatever. You set that party up and that link you'll have. And if you decide that you're going to do a virtual uh, fundraiser. You can just do a group on Facebook and whoever the organi organizationals, whoever those people are, is over the organization. You can make sure they'll be a part of that so they can add people to it. That's if you're doing it virtually. That's just one way. Now, if you're doing it where people are handing out things and you don't, you will not see a lot of that going on right now. Most likely they're going to tell you, let's do this virtually. That's probably what's going to happen because People are not trying to put people at risk right now uh, with going door to door or person to person. So you're going to have a better chance at getting people to allow you to set this up virtually. And a lot of these groups may already have uh, fan pages or business pages. They may already have that set up so you can actually post on these platforms if they have that set up already but if it's, if it's a small organization they may not so there are different ways of doing it you can do it with the paper so you can hand them information so they can collect orders that way that's one way you can do it but here's the thing guys the first thing you want to do is once somebody give you somebody you start going down your list of who to contact you want to find out who the event coordinator is you want to find out who that lead person is that work with that organization. Or you wanna find out who the fundraising coordinator is or something like that. Find out who that person is and talk to that person directly and let them know who you are. I'm a Sensi Independent Consultant and what we do, we do all we can to bless lives. So you came highly recommended and I thought I'd reach out to you to see if I can take part in helping you with your fundraising efforts. So that's kind of what I did with the Spoiler Senior Campaign, guys. That Spoiler Senior Campaign is just a different kind of fundraiser. It's a little different. I didn't, we didn't give money. We gave products. It's the same thing. 
So I contacted the nursing home and I asked them, could we donate products to the seniors? I found a contact person, got the contact person. I got the link set up. I got the link set up. I came up with the verbiage and I put it on my Facebook page and I put a timeline on it. The timeline that I did, I think it was 45 days. I put a timeline on it. I said, look, my goal, I set my goal up. So you got to set up a goal. So when you're talking to these people, you establish a goal. So let's say the goal is to, to sell $3,000 in products. So you're going to establish that goal. And then of that, you could tell the, the event coordinator how much you would get if this amount is sold. So then this amount is what you can give back to the organization based on those numbers. So you want to establish the number that you're trying to reach. So if it's 5,000, 10,000, whatever it is, you got to establish that. And once you establish that, then you come up with the amount that they could potentially get based on that amount. Then based on you establishing a dollar amount and how much you're going to give back to the organization, then you can set up your verbiage and start uh, posting this on social media, depending on how you're going to do it. I mean, it all depends on how you're going to do it. But that's what I did with my Spoiler Senior campaign. So I made a little flyer and I posted it every day. I posted it twice a day. I even went live with it because you got to stay with it. Whatever you're doing, you got to stay with it to make sure it works. So like me, guys, I got over $3,000 in PRV in, four, in 45 days doing this campaign. It's the same thing. Those points will help toss incentive trip. Those points will help you with getting new team members. Those points will help you build rewards. So I got all these rewards in that party that I can turn around and make a basket for somebody else to, to benefit from a basket that they may want to, uh, to use for raising money. So there's so many different things that you guys can do with these rewards. So some of the things, if somebody asked you, well, what, what companies or what organizations have you done fundraisers for? It's okay. You may not have done one, but I can tell you some that we have done and you can always use this because whatever I've done, you've done. We're all family. Whatever I've done, you've done. You can say this. Sometimes people just need to know that. So I have personally done fundraisers for veterans. I've done fundraisers for schools. I've done fundraisers for classes like cosmetology classes. I've done fundraisers for cheerleaders. I've also done individual fundraisers. I got a young lady. She was trying to take part in a pageant. It's an individual fundraiser. I did, I did a, a virtual one for her for a pageant. So I've also done fundraisers for, uh, uh, what is it? Homeless uh, people. I've done fundraisers for, oh my gosh. I just, I mean, charitable organizations like auxiliaries. I've done them for so many different causes. <laughs> and I've done fundraisers, fundraising events where you take products and you sell products and they get a certain amount of the profit. I've done those type also. So there are so many different ways, guys, that you could do fundraisers. In those fundraising events that I'm talking about, let's say that I've got about four or $5,000 of products that I'm outright selling. And I've actually donated 20 to 25% of what I've sold at the event. That's a different type of fundraiser. So a different, there are so many different things that you can do to raise money. But what I like the most, guys, I like these virtual ones. Oh my goodness, I love the virtual ones because I'm able to go live with it. I post it twice a day. And then guess what else, guys? People get to share it because I tell them, please share this. Share this with all your friends and family. And when people start sharing it and talking about it and taking part in it, you're going to be able to reach people that you normally wouldn't have reached. And this thing, guys, my, my Facebook page is still blowing up with all these responses. It's amazing to see how many people are out there looking to donate towards a worthy cause. So one person made a comment and said, I, this is an organization that I would love to see have funds. And whenever I just, she said, I just don't know how to send money there. 
Bingo. I'm going to send her a private message and tell her that this could be a fundraiser that I will consider and you could totally buy products from me and I'm going to personally give money to that organization that you want to support. So guys, it's just so many different ways we can approach this, but I thought, let me come here to kind of tell you guys a little bit about my experience in fundraisers because I've done many fundraisers. So, you know, when you're talking about dealing with kids, you want sometimes what I'll do, I give prizes to those kids to make it be exciting. You know, like the top seller, the top number, the number one seller, the, the second seller, you know, give a prize to the person that sell the most to kind of make it exciting. Um, but you know, like the fall of senior campaign that I had going on, the prize was I was able to have enough rewards in overage where I was able to give products to the staff. That was not in the works. What was in the works was to give products to the residents, 93 residents, but I, because of the fact that people kept giving, they kept giving money. As a matter of fact, I got another lady that's trying to give me money uh, a couple of days ago and the campaign is already over. So people were generously giving. I mean, some of them were giving all the way up to six or seven or eight to 10 or 12 residents, more than one. You'll find people who are out there, they're so generous. And I think we ended up giving away an additional 100 plus products to the staff. That was not even in the making. So when you go out there and you work this thing religiously and you do it twice a day, you do videos and you talk about it. As a matter of fact, I did a video prior to launching the, pro the, the project because I wanted to get people on board with me. So these are the things, guys, will help you really uh, be successful with a fundraiser. Because here's something else, guys. Fundraisers are not set up for you to make money. I want to put that out there first. That's not what it's for. Fundraisers is not for you to make profit. It's not for that. The benefit of a fundraiser, guys, is to help raise money for the cause. That's the benefit of it. Help raise money for the cause, and it's going to allow you to have some new customers. It's going to allow you to possibly book parties in the future. It's going to allow you to get new team members, the PRV. I remember my first fundraiser, guys, I was able to get about seven or eight new people to join my team. My first fundraiser. My first fundraiser helped me to promote to star director. My first fundraiser also allowed me to earn my first trip at the top level, guys, a fundraiser a school fundraiser, and I had no clue about what I was doing. Once I landed the fundraiser, I went out there on YouTube and I reached out to people to get some help. And this was like, you know, I think, I can't remember how many kids, it was a whole lot of kids. The, the fundraiser turned out to be about a $10,000 fundraiser. And we gave all of our commissions back to the school. It was very successful. And um, again, one of the team members, she joined maybe like two years ago, but she is the reason why I secured that fundraiser. So you see what I'm talking about, guys? What you gain from doing the fundraisers is so much more than you would give. It's all about giving, guys, and then God will bless us to get more back. So I just wanted to come here, guys, to tell you how pumped and excited I am about these fundraising efforts. This is going to put us in a whole new situation because a lot of these that we're talking about doing, we could do it virtually. And before, all the fundraisers that I've done in the past were all done face-to-face, -face and they were harder. If you can land a virtual fundraiser, it's going to be so much easier. But don't discount it if it's done the other way. That's okay, too. But the one thing I want to say, guys, is keep it simple. Because we have so many products, and I find that we did a full catalog fundraiser for my first one. It was real overwhelming. It was a lot of stuff. and But to, the simplest way to do it is to narrow down, like Scent Circle fundraisers, you narrow that down as one item, one product at least. Uh, car bar fundraiser, you narrow it down, one product to deal with. Even if you do like a car, if it, a car kit fundraiser, where they're getting like a room spray and a Scent Circle or something like that. Or I, I've even done a fundraiser for like a mini warmer and a bar. That's simple. Or you can do a moisture medley fundraiser. That's all one bundle. That's what I did for the seniors. 
or, uh, oh my gosh, there's so many different, oh, you can do a, a fragrance flower fundraiser. Those are very affordable. Everything I just mentioned, the only one that's, the most expensive one that I mentioned was the marshmallow bundle, which is uh, $31. They save $6. That's the most expensive, expensive one. All the other ones are less than that. So these are very affordable. People will buy multiple of these. So guys, I'm so ready and, I, and I, I pray that you guys are ready. Let's do this thing, guys. I challenge you guys to at least book at least one fundraiser and keep a list of others so that when that one ends, you'll be able to go right into another one. I challenge you guys to book at least one fundraiser and know that you're not alone. We're going to be here to help get you through this, guys. It's going to be the most amazing thing that you've ever done. You're going to have fun while doing it. Love you guys. Bye. I'm going to come back and answer those questions, guys. Love you guys. Bye.